Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to continue my series on voice leading and I'm going to use uh, the last eight measures of Stella by Starlight which is basically just uh, some two fives moving down and I'm going to show you some interesting ways to look at the dominant seven. We're going to just break down the top three strings but once you get this you can use any inversions and some dispersions as well and I'll show you those too. So check it out. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, the chord progression for the last eight measures of Stella is uh, E minor 7 flat 5, A7 altered, play A7 sharp 5 or flat 9, either one. D minor 7 flat 5 and then a G7 altered. Then you have a C minor 7 flat 5, F7 altered and then it resolves to the major. So what I'm going to do is take the top parts of the chord of the minor 7 flat 5. So if I had E minor 7 flat 5 with this voicing, there's a triad obviously up here. It's a G minor. For the dominant 7, I'm not going to use an altered dominant in this case. I'm just going to use the 7th, 3rd, and the root. But what you'll see is the top string has nice chromatic voice leading. So top note being B flat for our E minor 7 flat 5. Then I basically take this fourth interval and make it a tritone. And I put this string down here to the A, so I have this E minor 7 flat 5, A7, I'll do the same thing, whole step down, that's an F minor triad, so that's my D half diminished, here's my G7, and then I'm going to do the same thing down a whole step, here's E flat minor for my C half diminished, there's my F7, and then you'll notice one note goes down and there's my D minor triad for B flat major 7. So here it is in context. I'll just do the comp. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So you can hear it sounds great and if I used single lines I could do this. Works great. I mean, there's really nice voice leading there. So now check this out. This is really cool. When I get to that dominant seven and I have this shape here, it's not a triad, it's just a, a fragment of the chord. So there's the third and seventh of the chord and the root on top. But if I raise that top note up one fret, now I have this. A diminished chord is a G diminished, so I'm going from G minor to G diminished, which is a common motion for a 2-5, especially a minor 2-5. Also could work for a major, but we'll just use the minor 2-5 in this case. So now what's happening is that I have a flat 9. I have the altered chord, so the cadence now sounds like this. Notice the top note is staying the same for both chords, but that alteration that I have in there is, is actually that note, because this is actually not an altered note, but as soon as I do this, I have an alteration. When we have that first diminished shape, what we're going to do is we're going to remove one of the notes of that, and we're going to take that middle note off and make this. Now we have a minor shape, which is B flat minor. Check out how that sounds. We have G minor, B flat minor. F minor, A flat minor, E flat minor, G flat minor. Now for the dominant seven, what that did is it made this chord now a flat nine with a sharp five, and you'd know that if you have that chord with the A in the bass. And it sounds great too for solos. diminished. The next one is major. So we could take this G minor to F sharp major, F minor to E major, E flat minor to D major, 
and then resolve on D minor. And that actually makes the chord a 13 flat 9. So if you're soloing, So, so far we've had uh, the fragment, we've had the diminished, we've had a minor chord, we've had a major chord, and there's one left, and that would be the augmented, and the augmented would be A augmented. So we're going to do this. G minor, A augmented, F minor, G augmented, E flat minor, F augmented, and then... So the augmented chord shares a lot of what this has because the top note and bottom note are the same. And you can see that the minor chord and the diminished chord share a lot. It's really important to look through and not only see the notes that are common, but listen to what they're doing because they're really going to help you to be able to improve your voice leading, not only for your comping, but especially for your lines. This is how it would sound using open triads. I use the uh, augmented for um, the dominant seven, and that would look like this. If you played it on for A, you'd have this. There's your chord shape. And here's your G minor. you to check out different inversions because each inversion again offers you something different and unique. It's a great vehicle to be able to get through the changes and understand what's happening harmonically. See you next time.